Azura, good morning. And I am sorry to scare you or to alarm you. Um, but I am just sitting here in the dark and uh, I am slowly waking up. Um, actually, no, I have been awake for three hours now, um, just drinking coffee and making these videos for people. Excuse me. Mm. drinking so much coffee. It is possible <laughs> that during this video I will need to run to the uh, to the bathroom <laughs> to urinate <laughs> because I have drunk so much coffee. Um, and uh, as you might know, I think you probably do, one of the uh, things that multiple cirrhosis does is that it makes it difficult to be normal um, with urination. Um, I do not want to tell you <laughs> the silly details, the boring details, but it's a, yeah, it's a, it's an aspect of the disease. There are so many aspects of this. Right, okay. Anyway, the good news is that the post is working in Belgrade and you have received uh, to the lighthouse. And I am so pleased because we can now start to read it again. Um, it is a very special book and I am just amazed that you chose it. Wonderful. So happy for you. Uh, um, I did a uh, recording of some Benjamin poetry for Joe, 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 and uh, in that video, I, in, I said to her, I told her how wonderful you were for uh, choosing such a difficult and important book. <laughs> oh, that is quite nice. Look at this. How can I do this? Uh, Oh, right, okay. Now, uh, right, I shall do it. Uh, I'm going to turn the light on. Please close your eyes, because this is not a pretty sight. Not nice when I'm embarrassed. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's horrible. <laughs> uh, right, yes, my hair looks terrible. Uh, I have not shaved. And I really need, I really need a shower. This is embarrassing. Well, I will take my, my cupcake to the shower. <laughs> no, I will not, because I want to send that to somebody. I have not decided who yet. Um, but good, yes. So... We were on page, we finished uh, page 13, and we are starting near the bottom, if you are looking as well, at uh, insoluble questions. Right. I shall just read it. but. I apologize in advance that I am probably going to make lots of mistakes, especially with these complicated, elegant, long sentences 
the different patterns of thinking that Virginia expresses that she captures so beautifully. Um, okay, it is too early for literary analysis, so I will just read. <coughs> Excuse me. I will move this a bit. Is that better? It's better for now. Insoluble questions they were, it seemed to her, standing there, holding James by the hand. He had followed her into the drawing room, that young man they laughed at. He was standing by the table, fidgeting with something, awkwardly feeling himself out of things, as she knew without looking round. They had all gone, the children. Minita Doyle and Paul Rayleigh, Augustus Carmichael, her husband, they had all gone. So she turned with a sigh and said, Would it bore you to come with me, Mr. Tansley? She had a dull errand in the town. She had a letter or two to write. She would be ten minutes, perhaps. She would put on her hat. And, with her basket and her parasol, there she was again, ten minutes later, giving out a sense of being ready, of being equipped for a jaunt, which, however, she must interrupt for a moment, as they passed the tennis lawn, to ask Mr. Carmichael, who was basking with his yellow cat's eyes ajar, so that like a cat's they seemed to reflect the branches moving sorry reflect the branches moving or the clouds passing but to give no inkling of any inner thoughts or emotion whatsoever if he wanted anything for they were making the great expedition she said laughing they were going to town. Stamps, writing paper, tobacco, she suggested, stopping by his side. But no, he wanted nothing. His hands clasped themselves over his capacious paunch. His eyes blinked, as if he would have liked to reply kindly to these blandishments. She was seductive but a little nervous, but could not, sunk as he was in a grey-green somnolence which embraced them all without need of words, in a vast and benevolent lethargy of well-wishing. All the house, all the world, all the people in it, for he had slipped into his glass at lunch a few drops of something, which accounted, the children thought, for the vivid streak of canary yellow in his moustache and beard, that were otherwise milk white. He wanted nothing, he murmured. <laughs> he should have been a great philosopher said Mrs. Ramsay, as they went down the road to the fishing village. But he had made an unfortunate marriage. Holding her black parasol very erect, and moving with an indescribable air of expectation, as if she were going to meet someone round the corner, she told the story. An affair at Oxford with some girl. An early marriage. Poverty. Going to India. 
translating a little poetry, very beautifully, I believe. Being willing to teach the boys Persian or Hindustani. But what, really, was the use of that? And then lying, as they saw him, on the lawn. <clears throat> it flattered him, snubbed as he had been. It soothed him that Mrs. Ramsay should tell him this. Charles Tanley, Tansley revived, insinuating too, as she did, the greatness of man's intellect, even in its decay, the subjection of all wives. Not that she blamed the girl, and the marriage had been unhappy enough, she believed. Sorry, and the marriage had been happy enough, she believed. To their husband's labours, she made him feel better pleased with himself that he had done. Better pleased with himself that he had done yet, and would have liked, had they taken a cab, for example, to have paid the fare. As for her little bag, might he not carry that? No, no, she said. She always carried that herself. She did, too. He felt that in her. He felt many things. Something in particular that excited him and disturbed him for reasons which he could not give. He would like her to see him gowned and hooded, walking in a procession, a fellowship, a professorship. He felt capable of anything and saw himself. But what was she looking at? At a man pasting a bill. The vast flapping sheet flattened itself out and each shove of the brush revealed fresh legs, hoops, horses, glistening reds and blues, beautifully smooth, until half the wall was covered with the advertisement of a circus, a hundred horsemen, twenty performing seals, lions, tigers, craning forwards, for she was short-sighted, she read out how it will visit this town. It was terribly dangerous work for a one-armed man, she exclaimed, to stand on top of a ladder like that. His left arm had been cut off in a reaping machine two years ago. <laughs> Let us all go, she cried, moving on as if all those riders and horses had filled her with childlike exultation and made her forget her pity. Let's go, he said, repeating her words, clicking them out, however, with a self-consciousness that made her wince. Let's go to the circus. No. He could not say it right. He could not feel it right. But why not, she wondered. What was wrong with him then? She liked him warmly at the moment. Had they not been taken, she asked, to circuses when they were children? Never, he answered, as if she asked the very thing he wanted to reply to, had been longing all these days to say how they did not go to circuses. Um, sorry, I have lost the place. Uh, they did not go to circuses. It was a large family, nine brothers and sisters and his father was a working man. He himself had paid his own way since he was thirteen. 
Often he went without a greatcoat in winter. He could never return hospitality. Hospitality. Those were his parched, stiff words at college. He had to make things last twice the time the other people did. He smoked the cheapest tobacco, shag. The same, the old, the, the same the old men smoked on the keys. He worked hard, seven hours a day. His subject was now the influence of something upon somebody. They were walking on, and Mrs. Ramsay did not quite catch the meaning. Only the words here and there. Dissertation. Fellowship. Readership. Lectureship. She could not follow the ugly academic jargon that rattled itself off so glibly, but said to herself that she saw now why going to the circus had knocked him off his perch. Poor little man! And why he came out instantly with all that chat about his father and mother and brothers and sisters. And she would like to see to it that they didn't laugh at him any more. She would tell Prue about it. What he would have liked, she supposed, would have been to say how he had been to Ibsen with the Ramses. He was an awful prig. Oh yes, an insufferable bore. For though they had reached the town now, and were in the main street with carts grinding past on the cobbles, still he went on talking about settlements and teaching and working men and helping our own class and lectures till she gathered that he had got back entire self-confidence, had recovered from the circus, and was about, and now again she liked him warmly to tell her. But here the houses falling away on both sides, they came out onto the quay, and the whole bay spread before them, and Mrs. Ramsay could not help exclaiming, Oh! How beautiful! For the great plateful of blue water was before her. The hoary lighthouse, distant. Austere in the midst, and on her right, as far as the eye could see, fading and falling, in soft low pleats, the green sand dunes, with the wild, flowing, wild flowing grasses on them, which always seemed to be running away into some moon country, uninhabited of men. That was the view, she said, stopping, growing grey, uh, growing greyer eyed, that her husband loved. Excellent. Ooh. It's just so exciting to to be exposed to such a different style of language. Just, just to find out that the English language can be used in that unique and slightly strange way. It's disconcerting. I think that is the best word. Because if you are not expecting it, it seems at first to make no sense. To make to make the reader feel almost uneasy. And then it 
returns to a rhythm and a level of comprehensibility of the capacity to be understood. Uh, well, gosh, I need to thank you. I know you are always thanking me, but I need to thank you because I am learning and enjoying that. Um, I hope you are too. You have kindly said that you are. Mm. Okay, that's enough, isn't it? I shall, uh, I shall see you during the day, I hope. Bye-bye, Azra. Have a lovely morning. See you.